good day. It's October 22nd and we are just 16 days away to the 2022 midterm election. Although in Nevada, early voting started today. Thank you for joining us again at The Pulse. I'm Esmeralda Padilla Gould. And I'm Sam Dubon. We begin with the stories that dominated this week's headlines. Multiple media outlets are reporting that the Supreme Court declined to hear a case that was meant to reverse a 100-year-old racist law that disallowed equal rights as U.S. citizens in American-held territories like the American Samoa, Guam, the Northern Mariana Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. The case, entitled Fittisimanu versus U.S., hoped to reverse precedent in the insular cases, like the Spanish insularis, that denied U.S. citizenship to people who were born in these colonies. John Fittisimanu, who is the lead plaintiff in the case, told the Huffington Post that it is a punch in the gut of justice to leave in place a court ruling that I am not equal to other Americans simply because I was born in a U.S. territory. Peter Simono, who lives in Utah, also said, I was born in U.S. soil, have a U.S. passport, and pay my taxes like everyone else. But because of this discriminatory law, I am not recognized as a U.S. citizen. That means they don't have the right to vote in federal elections. The Supreme Court cases concerning the inhabitants of the former Spanish territory after the Spanish-American War and taken by the U.S. under the Treaty of Paris actually included the Philippines. The insular cases decision was so racist that languages like savages were used to describe in not granting the same rights to the insulares. A special prosecutor named by the former U.S. Attorney General William Barr, John Durham, who was charged with finding a conviction of lying to Durham, the FBI informant and research analyst Igor Dashenko about the source of the steel dossier, which allegedly linked Donald Trump to the Russia's Putin and the oligarchs about the 2016 election, was acquitted by a federal jury of all charges. John Durham conducted the investigations reportedly at the biddings of former Donald Trump. Some legal analysts saw this case to have been prompted against the research firm and against the FBI by Donald Trump when the DOJ boss was William Barr. This looks like another defeat for Donald Trump in court. Pure Medical Equipment provides top-notch quality medical supply equipment. Whether to rent or buy, Pure Medical Equipment and Supplies has it all. Pure Medical Equipment is committed to serve and give back to Southern Nevada. We deliver medical supplies and rentals to your door. Welcome back to the polls. Emmy and I were following candidates in the campaign trails the whole week, and we were able to talk to many candidates running for office. Most notably, we were able to cover exclusively the annual event uh, 
of the Philippine Institute of Civil Engineers, USA chapter, that was held in Las Vegas. We were able to talk to Nevada State Attorney General Aaron Ford, who was their guest speaker. American to hold a statewide constitutional office in Nevada. But the spoon in my mouth when I grew up, it wasn't silver. In fact, it was a little bit tarnished. I didn't grow up even at the Ohio State University. I now have five degrees, including two master's degrees, my law degree, and my PhD in educational administration. I have a lot of respect for the concept that government should help its residents and not hinder them. It helped me get to where I needed to be during tough times, and I think we should be helping anyone else get to where they need to be. That belief informs the way that I operate in the, in the Office of Attorney General every single day. Everybody in the room, if they're from my office, they would tell you if you were to ask them, what's our job? They would say, our job is justice. In particular, we view justice through the lens of what I refer to as my five C's. Constitutional rights, criminal justice, and reform. Nevada Attorney General is a Democrat running for re-election. Here are other things he said when the polls asked him uh, some questions. Attorney General uh, Aaron Ford, you're running for re-election. What are the important things uh, or issues for Nevadans that must be defended by you as their Attorney General? Well, first, Sam, let me say thank you so much for including me. I'm delighted to be here. This is a great organization and a great evening this, uh, tonight, and I'm, again, happy to be here. Uh, the, the focus in my office has always been on one thing, justice. Uh, and there are several forms of justice, and you can probably think of several things to say before the word justice, and you can follow it with justice, and that's what we do, criminal justice, uh, economic justice, environmental justice, um, you know, racial justice, reproductive justice, uh, y you name it, it's what we do in our office, and that's what's on the ballot right now. Um, our, 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 our justice in the area of our voting rights, it's under attack. Uh, justice in the area of so many different things, and so we, what we want to do in our office is continue that work. Uh, it's been a delight to be here for the last three years, ten months, and a handful of days, and I'm hoping for a second term to continue that work. Is the ruling of, by county officials in my county concerning uh, is, is a concern to us. Uh, should we worry about uh, as, as voters, especially the minority voters? Well, I think at the end of the day, um, we want to ensure that everyone's vote, who's, uh, everyone who's eligible to vote, has their vote counted. Uh, the Secretary of State's one of my clients, and I will be working with her to ensure that all votes coming out of Nye County and every county in our state uh, is, is given its due credit and is counted. Uh, I know the Secretary of State has indicated that because they will be doing um, electronic balloting as well, uh, that she has less of a concern, and I trust her judgment in that regard because she's the one who's charged uh, with the responsibility of overseeing our elections. That said, I will stand with her uh, to push back on any efforts to undermine that right to vote, whether it's in Nye County or anywhere else. Is reproductive rights uh, high in the agenda among women voters in this midterm election? Absolutely, and it's not just women voters. I think our state has shown itself to be a pro-choice state, um, giving the, the right to those um, who want to choose to start a family or not to be able to make their choice themselves without a government official telling them they have to do it. Uh, we're not about the business of government mandated pregnancies. And at the end of the day, um, I will continue to support that right. We have a statutory right in this state for abortion up to 24 weeks, but it can still be under attack. It can still be undermined. And that's the importance when someone, for example, who's running against me, says, intimates that she would prosecute and imprison women who seek abortions, that's dangerous. Uh, and it's important that we elect uh, me back into office so that we can continue to support and defend that, this important right. Attorney General, thank you for uh, agreeing to talk to us today. And uh, good luck on your race. God bless. Thanks, Sam. <laughs> You're welcome. State Senator Melanie Scheibel likewise agreed to talk to us. These are what she said. It's really an honor to have State Senator Melanie Scheibel. Hello, how you been? Thank you so much for having me. This is a fantastic event, and I really appreciate you inviting me. Well, it's really a pleasure to bump into you here at the event. Well, I just have a couple of questions for you, and it is State Senator Melody Scheibel. You're running for re-election. What makes this midterm election even more important, that the, that the voters send you back to State Senate in January next year? 
every election is important and that's why it's important that every person who's eligible to vote gets out and votes. This year, we are voting to protect choice and the ability to access an abortion. We're voting to protect the right to vote. We're voting to ensure that we're investing money in public schools so kids can learn in a safe environment and grow up to have their own families and their own careers right here in Nevada. And so I am excited to get back to work, but first I need to get reelected and go back to Carson City. Why is it important for you to advocate to this cause? I think that it's really important that everybody in Nevada have certain personal freedoms that include their reproductive choices, that include the ability to send their kids to public schools. And I think that it's really important that people have a voice in Carson City. I've been up there for the last four years working hard to ensure that everybody who walks through my doors or comes through my email inbox or picks up the phone and calls me is able to express how they feel about the process. And we're able to take that feedback back to the legislature and enact laws that people care about to protect themselves, to uh, make their homes, their families, their lives better, safer, and more vibrant. Well, thank you so much for exerting that effort to protect the fundamental rights of women as a woman. You know. And also, given the opportunity to address the Asians, especially the Filipino Americans, Pacific Islanders, here in Las Vegas and anywhere else in the world, what would you say to them? I would say that I am so proud to represent one of the largest contingencies of Asian American and AAPI people in Nevada, and they are such an important part of our community. They are um, small business owners, they're educators, they're lawyers, they're healthcare providers. They are members of our community who we have to stand with and for in order to accomplish anything. Thank you so much. On behalf of the Pauls and all the Filipino Americans here in Nevada and, and, and everywhere in the world, we wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are headed to a commercial break. Don't go away. We'll have more for you. The Senate race is in dead heat between Cortez Plasto and challenger Adam Laxalt. In the most recent October 12 polling by USA Today, Suffolk have Cortez Masto as a plus two, that's 2% two on top of Adam Laxalt. Uncle Sam, I know you've been following some candidates in the campaign trail. Do you have anything on Senator Cortez Masto? Absolutely. Uh, Senator Catherine uh, Cortez uh, Masto made a campaign stop at Seafood City in Maryland Parkway uh, last Sunday. The event was organized by film leaders. Among them were uh, uh, Pastor uh, Rosita Lee, uh, Marge Gonzalez, and uh, Bernie Benito, and some others. She agreed to talk uh, to the polls, and this is how it went. Senator uh, Catherine Cortez uh, Masto, uh, thank you for agreeing to talk to us with us today. Why is it important that we, uh, uh, that the, the Democrats, uh, uh, remain in control of the U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives? Well, I will say, just growing up in this community, um, I know for me, all the work that I have done is just for everybody here in the state of Nevada to make sure nobody's left behind. The, the prescription drug negotiation we've been able to pass to lower health care costs, capping the cost of insulin at $35 a month for so many seniors, lowering energy costs for people in the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, and then all of the work that we have done to address the drought and the wildfires, right, and bringing broadband connectivity and growing and creating jobs and growing our economy. This That's important. And right now, um, I will say uh, the work that I've been able to do 
as the United States Senator for the state of Nevada has been focused on that. And it's important. And that's why it's important for people just to get out and vote, to understand who is fighting for our community, who is fighting for jobs and the economy and our kids and their education and access to health care that we can afford, and who isn't. It's a crucial that we get out and turn out to vote in this state. Is this uh, particular midterm election even more important than uh, the other or the previous midterm elections? Well, this is important because uh, every, well, let me just say every, every election matters. And in Nevada, they're usually very close. So every vote matters. And I want Nevadans to know that their votes do matter. It makes a difference here. And for me, somebody who went through the public school system here, who believes in making sure everybody in the community has an opportunity to succeed, we should be electing candidates that believe the same thing, so that all of our families have the opportunity to grow and thrive. I know the Filipino community in here, I, I grew up in this community, it has it has beautifully blossomed in this community, and I've seen it grow. And I, there are entrepreneurs, there are teachers, there are nurses, I mean, look where we are right now, and this is just fabulous to see. I want it to continue to thrive. But there are people running for office, like my opponent, who is opposed to it. So it is crucial that people understand when they're getting out to vote who those candidates are, who those people are that are going to stand open and fight for the families. I know you were one of the senators who really uh, was instrumental uh, for the infrastructure bill. Uh, what are the wonderful things coming to uh, Nevada? So I was pleased to support, and this was a bipartisan infrastructure package that we invested in this country, but most importantly in Nevada long term over the next 10 years, the ability to create jobs, good union jobs here in Brewer County because we're going to be building not just roads and bridges and highways, we're bringing connectivity, broadband. I was also able in that uh, legislation to bring and focus on how we renew our older schools and uh, upgrade our older schools because like I said, I went to the public school system and some of my schools that are still are built, but they're not ready for Wi-Fi or they're not ready for clean energy, so we, we, I got legislation to focus on that. And then with the drought, a lot of the work that I've done around drought, making sure we're focused on conservation and reusing our water and augmenting the water along the Colorado River is in the Inflation Reduction Act. I thought we were funding uh, $8 billion to, to address the drought here in southern Nevada, and then also to address the wildfires that we see. If we see the smoke here in, in southern Nevada, but in northern Nevada, that's where the wildfires are hotter and longer. So I've worked with our firefighters here. Uh, in this state to actually focus on more legislation to address those issues. Thank you so much. Um, Senator uh, Catherine Cortez Master, last word uh, from you for our uh, Filipinos and uh, Asian Pacific Islander voters. Yes, thank you. Like I said, I am so pleased and proud to see the diversity in our community. I grew up with it and it's so great to see our API community grow and thrive. And uh, really at the end of the day, it's ensuring that we all are working together to help one another uh, and move forward. And it, it, so I'm asking everybody to get out and vote. Early voting starts October 22nd. Get out and vote. Your vote does matter in this state. Thank you so much for talking to us, Senator. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it. Thank you. She has been crisscrossing the valley and the state uh, and reaching out to many communities and many sectors of her constituents. It was heartwarming uh, to see our U.S. Senator uh, in the community. Filipino-American uh, voters should uh, hear what uh, she says. This is really important for immigration and health care and many uh, social services that only the Democratic uh, elected officials truly care about. We will have more for you from the campaign trail when we come back after the break, so stay with us.
welcome back to the polls. Let's find out uh, what the campaign temperature in the AAPI and APIA, the Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islanders. We know that Hawaii does not only have uh, nice blue seas and uh, great beaches, but the political color in Hawaii is blue. Two U.S. Senators, uh, Mazi Hirono and Brian Schatz, who are Democrats, and U.S. Representatives Kaia Lee Kaheli and Ed Case, also both Democrats. But what about in Nevada for the Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders? We are going to talk with someone in that community who will talk to us here at the polls. We are going to talk to uh, Amy Koo and uh, Daniel uh, Alfon uh, about uh, what's going on in, the, in their, this community. Welcome to the polls. Thank you so much. Hi. Just a little bit about myself. I'm Daniel, uh, Daniel Alfon. Uh, I'm here with uh, one API Nevada, uh, representing the Asian Pacific Islanders of America. I'm also one of the political cam uh, canvassers here in Nevada. I've been helping him out for a couple of weeks now. Uh, but mostly, I'm going to have to let uh, Amy take the floor here. Amy. Hi everyone, my name is Amy Ku. I am the Assistant Director of Outreach with the Asian Community Development Council, or ACDC. We're a nonpartisan nonprofit here that is focused on talking to the Asian and Pacific Islander community about voting and civic engagement. Uh, Amy, tell us what the um, AANHPI organization's mission is. Yeah, so uh, ACDC started out as a 501c nonpartisan nonprofit uh, dedicated to empowering, inspiring, and connecting the Asian American community. In 2018, after a couple of years doing direct services for the community, we realized that there was a need to talk to people about what the Asian American community was going to need to have addressed. So there are a lot of different issues in our community that we talk to voters about and then we talk to legislators about. Like you mentioned, there are a lot of legislators right now who are talking talking to community members, trying to figure out what is happening on the ground here in Nevada. And we really try to connect both community members with elected officials and with people who can make change. Okay. Thank you for that uh, information. Do you believe that many uh, uh, AAPI or many in the AAPI community will be voting in this mid midterm election? Are they going to engage, really get involved? Yeah, so we have over 389,000 Asian Americans here in Nevada. We found that out in the 2020 census. And uh, in 2020, we actually had unprecedented turnout of the Asian American community. So there was a 127% increase from 2016 to 2020. Obviously, 2022 is a midterm year, and so a lot of people don't even know there's an election happening. But it's really about education for the community. So if everyone who's watching and everyone here in the studio talks to someone about voting and explains to people why it's so important to vote, I think that we are going to see uh, the same type of turnout because people are tired of always having other people talk about the Asian American community. Uh, for us to have our own voices heard, we need to show up at the polls and really show our power. And that's a big part of why we talk to people at the doors. So Daniel has been doing a lot of talking to voters at the doors, getting people reminded that the election is coming. That's a lot of the work we do is just education because uh, people can't access voting without education and by providing more information to people, we're able to have more people come out to vote. And we, we take pride on the um, voter outreach that we have been doing. Um, we've been uh, uh, communicating with uh, various uh, Asian communities, Taiwanese, Vietnamese, Filipinos as well. Uh, just to keep yourselves in informed, C Catherine Cortez, Adam Maxwell, who you vote, just keep yourself informed uh, during the voting procedures. Yes. Uh, Daniel or Amy, uh, has there been like a significant, or did you notice any significant uh, new voter registration among young people in this uh, midterm election? 
Yeah, so Nevada, we're actually very lucky here because of the folks that we had in office in the last couple of years. In 2020, we actually introduced mail-in ballots for the first time. So now any registered voter in the state of Nevada will get a ballot sent directly to their door. And we also were able to uh, pass same-day voter registration. So now, even if you didn't register before the deadline, you can still go to a polling site on early vote or on the day of the election and register to vote. I think that making it more easy to register register to vote and giving people more options on how to register to vote has been really helpful and we do see a lot of young people wanting to vote. ACDC, we do a large voter registration program. Um, it has just ended uh, because the deadline for voter registration actually just passed in Nevada, but uh, we were able to register over 6,000 people. 2,000 of those voter registrations were at high schools alone. So we're going into high schools talking to people who are 17 or 18 about what it means to register to vote and what's going to be on their ballot and by starting that education early I think there are going to be more young people who are going to make their voices heard this year. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you for, for uh, joining us uh, here at the polls and uh, uh, best of luck to all the things uh, you're doing good things for the community. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. We're at the ending of our show. What's in store for the next episode, Uncle Sam? We are going to continue to monitor the tight races here and around the country. And we'll also be following the campaigns uh, all over the Las Vegas Valley. Maybe uh, I do some uh, exit polls uh, in the early voting. If you are eligible to vote and are not yet registered to vote, you still can. Until next time, vote early, register, and vote if you're not yet registered. Thank you for watching. Go out and vote. And God, God bless your week. Thanks for watching. Videos may contain content copyrighted by another entity or person. Phil TV Network claims no copyright to said content.